Hi everyone, I'm your English teacher Raghavendra. In my previous video, we talked about Brutus's soliloquy. And I was telling you that Brutus was defending his idea of assassinating Caesar in his own way. And now Brutus compares the present Caesar to a snake's egg and he decides to, you know, destroy the egg before the snake could come out after the egg, egg hatches. In the same way, he decides to, you know, kill Caesar or assassinate Caesar before he could become a king and then you know, misuse his power and become a dictator and make all his Romans his slaves. I think I stopped at that in my previous video. Now let's continue from where I left in my previous video. Well, uh, you should remember that Lucius is sent by Brutus to light the candle and then he is asked to, you know, Remind Brutus of that candle after he lights it. Now Lucius re-enters and Lucius says, The taper burneth in your closet, sir. Searching the window for a flint, I found this paper thus sealed up. And I am sure he did not lie there when I went to bed, he says. The boy finds a sealed paper which was dropped by Sinna a few, perhaps a few uh, hours before. And that sealed paper, Lucius finds and he brings it to Brutus and he tells Brutus that as he was searching for the flint to light the candle, he found out this sealed paper. And Lucius says that he was sure it was not at the window when he went to bed. Now Lucius hands over the sealed paper to Brutus and goes away. And he's about to go away. Brutus says, get you to bed again, it's not day. And boy Lucius is going away. And suddenly Brutus stops him. And he asks him a question. Is not tomorrow, boy, the Ides of March? Lucius says, I know not, sir. Brutus says, look in the calendar and bring me word. What is this calendar about? It's not the calendar we use today. You know, it's a calendar. The, the, the calendar in those days, perhaps 2,005 years ago, 2,500 years ago, was a ledger wherein all these events and dates and days were recorded. And Brutus wanted, or Brutus wants Lucius to look into that record and tell him what day is that day. Look in the calendar and bring me a word. And Lucius says, I will, sir. And he goes away. After Lucius goes away, the soliloquy continues. Brutus' soliloquy. Brutus had requested Lucius to light the candle in his study in his private chamber. And Brutus, instead of going into his chamber to read the letter, he looks around because he's in his orchard, he's in the garden. He's not able to sleep soundly. And he's awake for the past one, one month, he's not able to sleep. And he looks at the sky. And he finds meteors in the falling stars shooting towards the earth and bursting halfway. And those bursting stars are giving light enough for him to read that letter. That's what he says here. Look at this. He says, the exaltations whizzing in the sky give so much light that I may read by them. The exaltations. What are the exaltations? Those falling or shooting stars, those meteors that are dropping down on earth, that are shooting you know, towards the earth and bursting halfway, thus giving enough light for him to 
read those letters or read that sealed letter. Brutus says, the exaltations whizzing in the sky or in the air give so much light that I may read by them. And he opens the letter and reads it. He looks at the, you know, uh, the meteors bursting and giving, giving a lot of light. He looks at them and he just keeps the letter like this and starts reading. He says, what, what are the contents of the letter? So these are the contents. He says, Brutus, thou sleepest. Awake and see thyself. Shall roam, etc. Speak, strike, redress. These are the contents of the letter. Now, look at Brutus. Brutus, these are the words of Brutus. Brutus, thou sleepest awake. Such instigations have been often dropped where I took them up. Shall roam, etc. Thus must I piece it out. Shall Rome stand under one man's arm? What? Rome? My ancestor did from the streets of Rome the Tarquin drive when he was called a king. Speak, strike, retress. Am I entreated to speak and strike? Oh, Rome, I make thee promise. If the redress will allow or will follow, thou receivest thy full petition at the hand of he decides and he promises his country that he is going to assassinate Caesar and protect his country from the dictator. But he is a fool. He foolishly take this, takes this decision. And I am going to prove to you how foolish he is in his own words. Look at this. He reads out the contents of the letter. Brutus, thou sleepest. That means Brutus, you are fast asleep. Awake, you wake up please. That means that Brutus, you are closing your eyes. You are not able to, you know, find out or notice what is happening to your country at home. There your friend Caesar is going to be crowned a king. And if he is crowned a king, he will become a dictator. And then he will make all his people his slaves. And you should stop it. But you are not doing it. You are sleeping. Awake. These are the you know, meaning of these words. This is the meaning of these words. Look at this, uh, my dear friends. Brutus, thou sleepest awake. See thyself. You have to see yourself. That means that these words, these letters are not really dropped by the Romans. They are the fake letters dropped by Cassius. He has written these letters in his left and right hand. Cassius is a very cunning fellow. And he has dropped these letters into Brutus's house. And Brutus is foolish enough to blindly believe that the letters are written by the citizens of Rome, the people of Rome. Without even trying his best to find out the genuinity of the letters. Whether the letters are really written by the people or not, he doesn't find out. He doesn't try to find out. He takes those letters on their face value and blindly believes that the letters are written by the Romans. This is his first grave mistake, the gravest of all mistakes. That's why I tell you Brutus is a fool. And he is ego, an egoistic man. He is a self-centered man. He wants people's attention to him. He is an attention seeker. You know. Look at this. Brutus, thou sleepest awake and see thyself. So these are the words of flattery used by Cassius in those letters. He is flattering Brutus to see himself. That means that Oh, Brutus, you are such a great man, but you do not know how great you are. You must see yourself. That means you should realize your greatness. You are forgetting how great you are. Shall Rome, etc. speak, strike, redress. These are the words used very, very cleverly by Cassius 
in that letter. As if the letter is written by one of the citizens of Rome. He says, speak, strike, redress. These three words are very important. What is speak? The letter wants Brutus to speak out his mind, as it were. And then there is one more word, strike. Strike means he has to act. He should speak out his mind. He must, you know, plunge into action. He must dive into action. And then there is one more word, the last word, redress. By diving into action, by becoming a man of action, he should set wrong things right. As if Caesar is doing wrong things and as if Brutus is going to set them right. Don't you think the letter is flattering Brutus? And Brutus is a fool because flattery is the food of fools, people say. And Brutus here is very easily flattered by the, one of the letters written by Cassius. Look at this. Speak, strike and redress. Brutus sleepest awake. Such then he accepts it. Brutus accepts. He tells the audiences. Such instigations have often been dropped. This is not the first letter he is reading. He says, such instigations, such letters have often been dropped where he has found them and read them. And all the letters talk about Brutus's greatness and they also talk about or they have talked about the ambition of Caesar. And the letters are, you know, talking as if Brutus is the only man who can save Rome from Caesar. So these are the letters of instigation. What is instigation? Inciting one man against another man. That's called instigation. And Brutus is easily instigated by these letters. Without trying to find out whether the letters are really written by the Romans or not, he blindly believes that they are written by the Romans. This is the grave, this is the gravest mistake. This is the most unpardonable mistake Brutus makes. And hence, we can never pardon Brutus. Take it from me, my dear friend. He says, such instigations have been often dropped where I took them up. He says, he has taken them up. Shall Rome, etc. Then he completes the letter. He says, Thus must I piece it out. He wants to complete because le the letters are, uh, you know, uh, uh, incomplete. The words are incomplete. Sentences are incomplete. And he completes the sentences. He says, Shall Rome stand under one man's arm? This is what the Romans want. You know of Brutus. As per the letter. But you must know. I must know that the letters are not written by. Any citizen of Rome. Shall Rome stand under one man's. Or this is the instigation. Cassius makes you know. O oh, Brutus. Are you ready to allow Rome. To come under one man's rule and. Be afraid of this man called Caesar. Shall Rome stand? Shall Rome tolerate one man's rule? That one man is Caesar. Then suddenly Brutus now speaks to himself. He says, what Rome? Don't you want to be a slave to Caesar? Do you want me to fight it out against Caesar and save you? Then let me promise you, he says. Because he is easily flattered by these letters. He is easily trapped into those letters. Let me tell you, dear friends. And now, he look, look at Brutus' foolishness. Now he remembers his ancestor. And then he says, 
when my ancestor did that let me also do this and you and i you and i should very clearly remember that his ancestor lucius junius brutus lived probably some 4 500 years before this brutus he had two sons and his two sons supported a king called the tarquin when tarquin was crowned a king and when the tarquin became a dictator this brutus's ancestors sons supported the tarquin and that brutus that old brutus could not tolerate his sons you know uh, supporting a dictator and he had to sacrifice his sons for his country's sake when only when only when tarquin became a king and then became a dictator and ruled his country in a very cruel way we should remember that let us take up the present brutus and caesar has caesar been crowned has caesar become a king has caesar become a dictator no but still brutus has decided to eliminate liquidate assassinate caesar don't you know this is the tragic step taken by brutus a tragic decision foolish decision taken by brutus look at this he remembers his ancestor he says shall rome stand under one man's or what rome then he talks about his ancestor he says my ancestor did from the streets of rome the tarquin drive when he was called a king he very clearly tells us that the tarquin was called a king and he was driven away from rome by his ancestor for himself calling a king and becoming a dictator and did caesar become a dictator has caesar become a dictator has caesar become a king in the first place tell me dear friends my ancestors did the, did from the streets of rome the tarquin drive when he was called a king speak strike redress am i entreated to speak and strike look at this brutus says am i requested by my people to speak out and to plunge into action and set all these wrong things right by eliminating caesar by preventing caesar from becoming a dictator are my people requesting me then he suddenly he says oh rome i make thee he straight away promises rome that if redress is going to follow he says he promises rome that rome would completely get his full support and support in eliminating caesar o oh, rome i make thee promise if the redress will follow redress is if you feel that my leadership is going to set wrong things right then you are going to get my full support brutus says very blindly like a fool if the redress will follow what's the meaning of redress you know uh putting evil things set setting evil things right setting bad things right is called redressing correcting wrong things into right things is called redressing he says if the redress will follow thou receivest thy full petition at the hand of brutus he says and your request will be granted by brutus and i will take the leadership and i will remove caesar from becoming a king and then becoming a dictator is it not a, an unpardonable sin my dear friends for brutus to kill an innocent caesar even before he could become a king supposing caesar becomes a king and then becomes a dictator there is much reason in what brutus says 
in eliminating Caesar. Now Caesar hasn't become a king. He's just a Roman general. Don't you think Brutus is committing an unpardonable crime of assassinating Caesar? He is murdering Caesar in cold blood. I'm telling you. He's thinking of murdering Caesar in cold blood, which is unpardonable. And here Brutus is becoming an ungrateful friend of Caesar. Caesar always is under the impression that Brutus is his best angel. Brutus is Caesar's best angel. That is what Caesar has believed so far. But what, is, what are we going to see here? This angel of Brutus is going to become a devil, you know. He is going to backstab his best friend Caesar. This is unpardonable. This is called ingratitude, dear friends. Ingratitude is the main theme of the whole play. The ingratitude of Brutus. The ingratitude of Brutus. That's why later on in the play, when Antony speaks to the people, Antony says, the ingratitude, this ingratitude, more treacherous than traitorous arms, quite vanquished Caesar, then burst his mighty heart, he says. The ingratitude of Brutus burst Caesar's mighty heart, and that paved way to Caesar's death. That really killed Caesar, he says. Because Caesar is stabbed 33 times by the conspirators, dear friends, in that assassination scene a little later in the play. Caesar is stabbed 33 times, but Caesar doesn't die. He dies only when he receives that 34th stabbing from Brutus. That, that, that ungrateful stabbing by Brutus breaks Caesar's heart. That's why Caesar says, a two brute. Then he says, then falls Caesar. So Caesar doesn't want to live when his best friend has turned against him. That is the ingratitude of Brutus. That's why Brutus's crime is unpardonable, dear friends. So when Brutus decides to assassinate Caesar, by promising his countrymen, Lucius enters and Lucius now tells him, Sir, March is wasted 15 days. Wasted means spent. It is the 15th of March today, the Ides of March. You remember? The soothsayer had warned Caesar to be careful on the Ides of March. And now the Ides of March has come. And there is a danger to Caesar lurking very secretly, you know, waiting to pounce upon him. Death is waiting to pounce upon Caesar because that day being the Ides of March, the 15th of March. Lucius says, Sir, March is wasted 15 days. Then suddenly, they hear a loud knock on the door. Then Brutus says, it's good. Go to the gate, somebody knocks. And Lucius goes away to find out who is knocking on the door. You know who is knocking on the door? The conspirators have come. Cassius and other conspirators have come to meet Brutus and Cassius is knocking on the door. But Bruce and Ru Brutus and Lucius do not know that. And Brutus has sent Lucius to find out who is knocking on the door. And now Brutus' soliloquy continues. He says, <clears throat> he re suddenly remembers Cassius. Here. Perhaps his heart says that it is Cassius who is knocking on the door. That's why Brutus remembers Cassius. Here. He says, I'll read out the entire you know, soliloquy here. Since Cassius first did but me against Caesar, I have not slept. Between the act of a dreadful thing and the first motion, all the interim is like a phantasm or a hideous dream. The genius 
and the mortal instruments are then in council and the state of man like to a little kingdom suffers then the nature of an insurrection he is growing philosophical here Brutus he says since Cassius first wet me against Caesar a month ago during the festival of Lutical Cassius started speaking against Caesar's ambition that's what he says here since Cassius has first wet me first instigated me sharpened my mind against Caesar since that day a month ago he says he hasn't slept that means that one month Brutus has spent sleepless nights and then he says between the acting of a dreadful thing a month ago they acted of a dreadful thing that means they planned of the dreadful thing what is the dreadful thing my dear students it is the assassination of Caesar they planned it a month before that's why he says between that day and its first motion that is its first deed that action of killing Caesar between the plan and the action that interval is too much for Brutus to you know tolerate it is like because he has been spending almost 30 day 30 sleepless nights and he says he has been having nightmares bad dreams that interval you know between the first planning and the planning being put into action that those 30 days are like a phantasma or a hideous dream or a nightmare or a bad dream he says between the acting of a dreadful thing between the planning of a dreadful thing and the first motion what's the first motion the first act that acting of a dreadful thing that is assassinating caesar dreadful thing is the assassination of caesar that that was planned a month ago now its first motion is in fact in the it is in the assassination of caesar between the two those 30 days all the interim all that interval those 30 days are like a phantasma or a hideous dream they are like a nightmare they are like a deadly dream a phantasma and those 30 days what happened was the nature of brutus has been completely shocked and it has gone out of shape because there has been a conflict between the powers of his reasoning and the uh, and the passions of his heart they had there was a conflict between head and the heart the head <coughs> keeps telling him to stop from killing caesar but his emotions the heart went on you know it has gone on forcing brutus to take that deadly step of assassinating caesar so brutus is caught between his love for his caesar for his friend caesar in the love of his country and somewhere down the line those flattering letters misguided him and now he has taken up this wrong decision of assassinating caesar and thereby you know saving his country he says the genius and the mortal instruments the genius is the, the powers of reasoning that is the head and the mortal instruments are these feelings these uh, little five senses you know of our body they are mortal instruments between the head and the heart there was an argument there has been an argument they are in the council he says the genius and the mortal instruments are then in council there was a conflict between the head and the heart of Brutus and the state of man and look at Brutus's nature he compares Brutus's nature to a small kingdom and when there is a civil war inside a kingdom don't you think the kingdom suffers a lot when there is a civil war within the country 
the same thing he says brutus says is happening within him his body is like a small kingdom and there is a civil war between the head and the heart and hence his nature is completely shaken and that's why he is not be he has not been able to sleep all these 30 days since cassius has wet him against since cassius has instigated brutus against caesar that's what he says here and then the state of man like to a little kingdom suffers them the state of man the nature of man suffers like a little kingdom from the nature of insurrection what is insurrection that civil war understood and now lucius enters and he says it is his brother cassius who has come there and knock, who is knocking on the door and brutus sends him to bring them and let us stop here dear friends and we will continue what happens between brutus and the other conspirators in my next video until then bye bye god bless you all